get that feeling like you've just taken that first step down the path of just don't go there? Yeah, so this feels like one of those. But fortunately for us magnificent creatures, countless millions of years of evolution have seen fit to imbue us with the ability to completely ignore that instinct. God. Now I really wanted to do this with TIG, but there are some complications with that. I mean, first thing, I would need some kind of a wire feed, hand feeding filler on a CNC welder. I don't know, I'd feel a little silly. And the other thing, which is actually my biggest concern with this little endeavor, is frying all of my electronics. And since my TIG welder is a high frequency start, I don't have scratch start on that TIG welder. I don't know, it sounded like a higher risk of fryage. My first step here is trying to figure out how to mount this uh, torch on the CNC machine. So I found these wire clamps. They look about the right size. The idea here is sort of quick and dirty. I don't know, not perfect, but it might do. I don't want to squeeze that so hard that I break through this insulation. I might actually put a few more wraps of tape on there. Ideally, I could use one so I can adjust the sort of the attack angle of the torch on the work. But two might make for a smarter start. So I've got the torch mounted, let's call that uh, more or less. And I've got the two torch switch contacts wired to the relay that used to start the spindle. So it's the same relay, so M3 and M5 will start and stop the torch the way they started and stopped the spindle. Now once the actual welder is on, these brass and copper parts on the naked torch, I'm pretty sure are going to be live. Danger, AKA for the love of God, don't try this at home. So the ground clamp is not attached to anything. I've got the machine set pretty much as low as it'll go and the wire speed tuned down quite a fair bit. So we'll go back to the torch view in a second, but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing in Mach 3. Maybe you can see some of the commands there already. I'm basically going into incremental mode and then an M3X, I don't know, 100 or so is what I've been screwing around with. That will start the torch and move 100 millimeters in the X direction. Enter and follow that with an M5, which is to stop the torch. Now I am noticing that the reaction time between torch on and torch off isn't all that fast. I assume that's some setting in Mach 3, but I'm just gonna work around it for now. All right, that's probably hard to see, so I'm gonna try that again. As you can see, the CNC machine has ninja-like reflexes. All right, nothing left to do but try it out. Fire in the hole. All right, how's that for you? Pretty nice for a first weld bead. It's actually not the first, it's probably the 10th. Just trying to get everything tuned in. This side is where they started really coming together. You see that last one is a lot colder than these just because the material was sort of preheated by the time I got to the last pass. But it's not like I'm going for x-ray quality nuclear welds here. I've got the welder tuned down almost as low as I could go for this material thickness. It's less than an eighth of an inch. Two millimeters. I just don't want to waste a ton of wire with these shenanigans here or gas myself out of my garage. So I've packed the table up with some wood, some boards. I've got all the exposed areas sprayed down with uh, anti-spatter, anti-stick spray. 
I want to make sure all the weld current stays right here and nothing goes through the frame and that control box. All right then, may the real screwing around commence. So it looks like the weld buildup is not keeping up with the torch movement. So this is a thread milling program and I set a diameter and the pitch was essentially what I thought was one bead height. I suppose as heat gets in there, the thickness of each next bead layer probably isn't constant. Well obviously isn't constant. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for the gold so fast. Alright, I'm going to try this one more time. I've made a slightly bigger circle, and I've reduced the pitch of the helix. Maybe that larger diameter will let this cool just a little bit faster. I have knocked down the overall height too. So I just hit these on the wire wheel. There's the first one I did. There's my C anemone. I'm gonna to have to go back and look at that footage. I've got this sneaking suspicion that I did something wrong in the programming. Just thinking back, I think my torch ended up a lot higher than I intended it to. Basically, the torch climbed faster than I it should have and ended up in too much wire stick out. I think anyway, I mean, there, there wasn't too much to that program. I'm surprised that the first five or six turns turned out okay and then it, it all went south. Anyway, there's the last one. If you're a regular here, you may know that I'm easily amused when it comes to this kind of stuff. And my intention here was to really get into this, you know, writing and funny shapes and all. It's not much of a stretch of the imagination to see where you could go with this. And I'm willing to bet that even this level of homebrew CNC welding could rival even the best commercial plasma cutters at converting perfectly good material into scrap. And though I seldom like to admit it, there is some method to my madness. More so than CNC welding, I figured the router table could make quite the glorified welding positioner. So off camera, I 3D printed a short piece of pipe and a flat plate. And I'd like to try to make that weld right there. So let's see if I can walk you through the setup here. It might look like I just took all the junk off my bench and threw it on the router. But what you're looking at is the fourth axis, the rotary table, on its side, clamped to the table through a piece of wood. That's where the welding is going to happen. On the C-clamp that's holding the fourth axis, I've got this cant twist floating the ground up here in the air. It's insulated. There's some plastic and some rubber in here. And there's some copper wire just sort of shoehorned in there, acting like somewhat of a wiper contact, I guess, up against the platen here. Again, the concept is to keep all the weld current here and not have any run through the gearbox or the stepper or the control box. Oh, and if anybody's curious, I did get most of the backlash out of that fourth axis. We can get into it a bit more if I ever do another fourth axis related video, but essentially what I did was replace the bearings in the gearbox with some eccentric bushings. Uh, I'll put in some photos. The bushings allow me to change the spacing between the worm and the gear and take that backlash out. I'm going to have to break it back down again and add some set screws because some of the backlash is creeping back. As I've been alternating rotation of the table, I, th I think those bushings are moving. And it was originally at 30 thou, I believe. I took it out completely to like zero, one thou on the diameter. And now it's slowly creeping back. <laughs> It doesn't look too bad. My aim could have been better. 
I did hear some stuttering. Both parts are relatively clean. I assume I'm probably not getting the best contact at my ground clamp. So I think that does it for my little proof of concept here. Was it fun? Totally was. Will I actually use the CNC machine to do welding? Probably not. I mean, quite frankly, I just don't do enough of this stuff to really warrant all of that setup. But I think the biggest problem, problem, is not really being able to generate simultaneous, let's call them toolpaths. On the other hand, this could be useful to build up like small shafts. Those are always a pain in the butt. Set up the fourth axis horizontally and be able to constantly build up a worn out shaft. But I ask the question again, will I actually use this for CNC welding? More than likely not. Is it weird that I'm down here by myself in my garage asking and answering my own questions? Definitely.